Good afternoon and thank you for coming back to a Tony Montana video. Please say hello to my loving uh, pet and um, friend, uh, Copy. Uh, he is always giving me love. He's always uh, changing my color from dark to light. <laughs> he, he will do this all day, all night. He's just a very loving dog. And, um, and yes, a lot of it is because of the genetic, uh, you know, genetic uh, selection that he, uh, his family, his parents and grandparents and so on and so forth have uh, have gone through. The selection, you know, actually functional to, uh, but there are side effects, there are the residuals that happen when you do one thing, other things uh, tend to uh, change or change uh, more to a different, you know, different function or they, they enhance themselves in, within one function and him again he's a very loving dog very very uh, like i said he I, I, I did not put anything on my legs for him to to lick and continue to lick he is just loving me and just showing if if i have my arm for let's see if he does my arm copy let's see he's let's see but anyway uh the point of this i wanted to continue talking about you know the pedigree uh, the genetic selections or, uh, and connect more dots basically um and and uh, speak of uh things that have happened uh, things that have come up in the news uh in regards to not the american people terry i appreciate that the a lot of the news call them staffordshire terriers um if uh, for for you guys that haven't been haven't heard anything uh basically an old gentleman uh, in his 80s was killed by three Staffordshire Terriers. Uh, I would say that uh, I don't consider those any animals that I saw, even though I'm not sure if they were them. Come here. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure if that was those dogs that I saw, kind of like in a flash, one white dog, and some. I think that was the only one that I can recall. Um, I don't know if that was just a random dog that they picture there just for, you know, just for imagination, or was he one one, one of the animals that did the attacking? Those, that, I don't think so because the dog was completely white and uh, obviously they had no red on him. Uh, so uh, I wanted to talk about this. I wanted to make people understand that, you know, again, my channel is always 100% truth, no sugar coating, no um, way of, uh, I, um, I'm not going to say things in a certain way just to make my uh, breed of choice seem better or seems nicer this, this these dogs are not gods not machines come here copy no barking in the house come here uh so come here so uh we wanted to basically talk about you know that the understanding of first not everything is a pit bull and we know this and i've got a lot of people that have experience we know that not everything they and most of the things that they mentioned in, in most dogs that they mentioned as pit bulls, re, label them as pit bulls on the news are not. Now, there are, like any other animal, there are true American pit bull terriers that um, could be men biters. You know, they do it for, the, the, it's a difference between main biter and, 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 and a men eater. You know, a men eater, uh, all the all channels have defined, come here, copy. They have defined this. And uh, difference. One, the, the man biter is a dog that will bite for specific reasons. You know, be it fear, be it uh, um, you know territory, uh, defending or guarding. Um, I guess uh, puppies, their puppies, or copy. Uh, oh, defending. Come here, puppy dog. Defending uh, puppies or you know territory. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, food. Those are type of a dog. Uh, main biters in, co in contrast to a main killer that it's actually looking for eager to bite for no reason you know uh, that is a, a different type of dog and i would say that uh, that type of dog that was genetically wired that way uh, uh, is extremely rare in the american people terrier extremely extremely uh, uh, most of them will fall under the uh Hey, come over here. Under the under socialized, you know, under I guess uh, you know, um, under trained to use the a, a wide term, you know, for the American people. Terrier, I could use the word schooling. You need schooling on these dogs. 
uh, and uh, any breed, not necessarily school, uh, this breed, but any uh, breed that uh, has the potential to harm, I would say even chihuahuas, because uh, you could have a little kid and chihuahua will hurt. So every dog should, you know, have some sort of schooling, and that schooling should include environmental schooling. You know, meaning meaning give them as as many uh, landscapes to see as possible. You know, so that that is different temperatures, different feel, air, everything. That is uh, uh, the way dog will assimilate and expand its brain. Oh, you also have to, you know, uh, school them in basically social behavior, social with other people, with people rather, not other people. Other, you know, with people, perhaps if you want to go as far as, you know, to, uh, showing them different animals at, as young is just be, just to assist you or assist the dog in learning new things, learning new smells of different animals. Like I, as you can, see, you, as you have seen in my videos, my dogs uh, live around uh, with a cat. The, obviously, the cat is the main predator. Uh, excuse me, main. Um, uh, I guess uh, not a predator, but um, competition of, of of feed or food. So that's that's why the dogs and cats don't get along. Obviously, many. Many, many, many moons ago, uh, they were the, you know, competitors in, in a larger scale, uh, big canines versus big uh, uh, felines. Copy, come on here, man. So anyway, so uh, we have go back to, to the thing is just, you know, you have to understand that this breed was, uh, it's people friendly by nature and why and i will tell you why and how it became by nature it wasn't the main intention to uh, basically it wasn't the main intention to be people friendly let's 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 clear that up the main purpose uh of the breed was for them to be functionally uh and functional basically so to, so to do well in, in, in their function the better the the, the better skill, the better that those are the dogs that were bred. Now, here is when things uh, have to go back to the 1850s. It, in, uh, in the 1850s, some people still think that that's when the stuff, people began. And no, come here, boy. In the 1850s, that's when uh, obviously that when people have were coming here uh, from Europe. And bringing their dogs one way or another, and here in the 1850s, they were matching their own uh, dogs, pit dogs. There was no breed at that time. Even when uh, the at the end of the 1800s or 90, excuse me, uh, around the eight, 1890 something, 98, I want to say, uh, that's when the uh, they started being registered as pit bulls, registered, re recognized as pit bulls. But uh, but at the same time, it was not. Uh, the people we know today, those dogs were still crossbred. A lot of these dogs were just getting into, you know, still had other uh, other char characteristics of other breeds, physically or, or mentally. And so it, it wasn't, you know, they the really the key here to, for them to form as a, as a breed was when they basically they. They being the, the dog fighters, uh, they decided that no longer will they accept uh, other breeds to compete in in dog fights. They um, decided, and here's where that pedigree thing comes back. They decided that the dogs needed to be uh, off a pedigree from a lineage of, of dog fighting or the dog fighting dogs in that lineage. Uh, come on, move, just to recognize them to be. Dog fighters of lineage, not just, uh, excuse me, not dog fighters, but fighting dogs of lineage rather than much of crossbred dogs from, from uh, as they were using or doing before. So when the, the rules change, that is when the dog became more uniform, okay? They, they, were, they became more uniform in, in terms of uh function and then that begot the uniform of look 
Okay, physical. Uh, when I say look, I don't mean color. I don't mean anything. I mean, uh, I guess the functional proportions. That's what I was looking for. The proportions of the dog became, became more and more uniform as they, as they used rules to make the dogs more uniform. Like I said, going back, to having to prove the dog had a pedigree of, uh, of, of, of fighting lineage rather than just having much Jim and Shepherd or, or, or other things. So that in itself, that, that uniform, uh, again, also created some sort of temperament because again, the ch rules change obviously, and they, or, or they were more emphasized rather that the dog, sh or one of the rules is you're going to lose if your dog bites uh, the other handler, but you, or by the referee or anyone around. Obviously, nobody needs to be inside the pit. And again, we are using uh, historical references. So uh, that was one of the rules. So uh, and people did not think of it as directly, oh, I don't want a uh, people biter. Uh, they would think, oh, a lot of them, some of them would say, I don't want a people biter. But some of them would say, oh, I don't want to lose. So I want to make sure that the dogs I get or the dogs I breed uh, do, are, do not show people uh, biting tendencies or reactive tendency to bite. Uh, again, all because of the sport of American people tear. Uh, again, some did select because they have families and they didn't want to have the a, a, a animal that would automatically or reactively bite another person. So, give me a second right here. Sorry about that. Uh, so again, just to recap, uh, the pedigree back in the 1850s and 1900s um, became more and more important because, again, at the beginning, when there was no breed in the 1850s, the people didn't exist uh, in, the, in, in the Americas. The, the, there were all kinds of dogs of all kinds of uh, selections uh, coming from different places. But as the years passed, the decades passed, um, and then we there was a recognized breed of uh, American people terrier through the U UKC. Uh, there were also some sort of uh, there were some requirements that UKC when they sanction matches, they uh, require pedigree dogs rather than having random dogs uh, fight each other. So uh, pedigree has been very important throughout the history of the American people terrier and of any uh, work working animal or of any breed that is meant for work the pedigree is important they follow pedigree perhaps not as tight they don't they don't do inbreeding as we do they don't do like line breeding as we do but they still look at the pedigree and try to uh try to make it work within the pedigree uh, so do you think about that think about those dogs that you know the attacked the person or they were not obviously i've would, would discredited them i would say they would, are not Staffordshire Terriers, but again, those individuals that owned the dogs were not experts. In, at, the, at the same time, if they, if they knew the dog that were being aggressive or are human aggressive to strangers, then they should have uh, had better uh, safeguards, or at least don't leave them outside the, you know, in, in the yard, because especially I saw the fence, the fence was pretty low, four feet, I think it was, and you know the dogs, that, that's nothing, they could just hop that in a second, no problem. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this do um, this story, this you know, this, this this video of how I see the pedigree and how the pedigree aids in the you know in, in the creation creation and uniformity of the any breed of animal. So again, this is this is uh, one last thing I, for I, I forgot to mention. You know about genetic selection versus results. You can choose between uh, dogs that you think are going to do well, but really it, it, there is a percentage of luck involved in that. Because even though they, they are well-bred, they are uh, function well, two, I mean, a brother, uh, one, one male and a female could cross, and, uh, and you, the brother of the male and the sister of the female can cross and may have may result may have big differences in results 
So is this a level or luck? So let me tell you, say that again. If you had two male brothers and two female uh, sisters, uh, and they one brother bred with, with one of the sisters, and the other one bred to the other sister, those doors, dogs, even though on paper may be very, uh, very similar, or if not, uh, in layman's terms, identical genetic. Uh, um, a pool they caught, they have in their you know in the background. They may result. They may have puppies that act and look different. So think about that. Again, I'm just doing it pretty much as I go. So I, I hope you enjoy it. Give it a thumb up. And this is Tony Montana. Until next time.